BAU or Supernova Taiwan um, uh, Although the idea of using cluster through cosmology is very simple. Uh, you just look at the sky, you count the number of clusters, and you, you just count the number of clusters that are of mass and resist, and then you can put the strength cosmological parameters. However, in reality, uh, this practice is quite challenging because the, in order to study the, the, the luster mass function, you must know the luster mass first. And um, from observational point of view, there are different ways to estimate the cluster mass. For example, in optical observation, you can derive cluster mass based on the measurement of galaxies, velocity dispersion. In X-ray band, we can use the interluster medium profile and put the assumption that the interluster medium in high risk at equilibrium so that we can derive the total mass. Or um, a more direct way to estimate the cluster mass by, by means of gravitational lensing. But the problem is each of the, I mean, the problem with any of those methods is very observationally, uh, observationally expensive in the sense that in order to have a good estimation of cluster mass, you really have to uh, to um, to put a long time observing for one single object. So imagine if you have a survey like a last survey of like thousand of cluster or even hundred thousand cluster, then it's it's practically impossible to measure the mass for every single cluster. So an, an alternative way is to overcome this challenge is to use the so-called scaling relations which is simply those relations connect the cluster mass to other easily observable quantities like uh, the interluster medium luminosity, temperatures, or any combination of them. And um, this kind of study is particularly relevant in the context that um, in near futures we will have very last survey of a cluster like Erosita was supposed to be launched this year, but uh, unfortunately it has been delayed once again. And um, in 2020, you have Euclid and uh, Tung probably with about it. And for long term, we will have the next uh, generation of X-ray observatory, Athena, which has been approved by ESA. So in future, we will have like 100,000 plus uh, and uh, up to very high receipt, like receipt 2. So by studying the cluster mass function of those survey, uh, sorry, by those uh, sample, and see how the cluster mass changes at the function of receipt, we can, uh, we would be able to put constraint on the, um, on the matter rows as well as the cosmic accelerations. So the main goal of, of my study is to use numerical simulation to characterize those scaling relations and I particularly focusing on the X-ray scaling relations like uh, the which is simply the relation between the cluster mass and uh, those quantities that you can measure from X-ray like as I say the gas mass, gas luminosity or temperature. Um, but uh, before showing you some uh, numerical result, I just would like briefly to review the very first model of cluster scaling relations. It is called stair stimulant model proposed by Kaiser in 1986. So the key assumption of this model is gravity is the only component that drives the formation of cluster. And gravity also the, the only one component that defines cluster thermodynamics. So as a result, in this model, cluster is just simply self-similar in the sense that they are just a scale up or scale down version of each other. And if you would like to, to have an idea of how self-similarity looks like, you can imagine like version by the Oscar. So each of them is just a, a smaller or bigger version of another one. Another uh, important consequence of this uh, model is that uh, the probability of, I mean, two different probability of cluster can be related by a simple power law. Because with a simple power law, you can scale up or scale up to, uh, to other clusters with different mass or size. And um, 
Okay, and within this uh, Cecilia model, uh, in addition to the assumption of period of equilibrium, we can derive uh, analytically the scaling relation for cluster mass and uh, thermodynamic properties of the gas, like gas mass, gas temperature, luminosity, or on the bottom you see yx, it just simply the combination between the gas mass and the temperatures. So in, in those scaling relations, yeah, you see that uh, how the cluster mass is related to other observable quantities. And we have also the function E of Z, which is simply characterized uh, how slow scaling relations evolve over recipe. This comes into the game because the fact that uh, uh, in cluster study, we used to uh, define the cluster radius uh, delta uh, as the radius within which the over density of the cluster is still about uh, delta time, the mean critical density of the sorry, the mean density of the universe. Of the critical density of the universe. Okay. So the, the mass so, temperature, it, it means that the mass depends on the temperature. Sorry. The mass temperature. Yes. Is that mean that the mass depends on the temperature? Yes, the mass. The, uh, the so, so yeah, this is just show you how the, the mass read related to the temperatures. Of course. Uh, in, in front of the EFC, you must have some kind of normalizations. Uh, this is a constant. But here, did you see how the cluster related to the temperatures at the power law? Thank you. Okay, so um, from the model, you can derive very beautifully the, the uh, scaling relation between cluster mass and other thermodynamic quantities of the gas. But the problem is that uh, when we compare those scaling uh, relations with the observed data, so here I just simply show you some um, review of the observed results on the scaling relation <coughs> for the slope. Right, the slope here, for example, here you, you see that from a similar model, it's predict the mass depend on temperatures at the power of 1.5. One, uh, one, 1. But in reality, it is. Uh, here is most of the observed uh, <coughs> result, so more or less some kind of deviation from the set similar predictions. And this also happened for other uh, scaling relations like for luminosity, temperatures, or luminosity, total mass. Mm. There is similar reason for this kind of deviation because in the set similar model, we just simply assume that gravity is the only uh, player. So the model just simply not complex enough to describe what actually happened in reality, right? Because in reality, we need to take into account not only gravity but also other variable activities. For example, like you have the uh, radiative cooling because the gas can uh, lose their energy due to the radiative cooling, radiative emission. And when the gas lose the, lose the energy, they can collapse and form star. And the star, after, I mean, at the end of their life, it could be converted into supernovae, Taiwan 8, or black horns. So, and this can form Asian later, and Asian in, in turn can uh, give some kind of energy feedback to the, to the medium. So, in, in other words, so the reality is much more complicated than. Uh, what you assume in the same similar model. So we need to somehow to take into account those astrophysical uh, effects. So that's why we we need to use the uh, cosmological hydrodynamical simulations to to study those scaling relations. Um, okay, so I just would like to briefly uh, describe the simulation that I used for this kind of study. It's called the animal gas simulation uh, run by uh, the groups at Trieste and Munich. And you can uh, see more detail on this simulation by in this uh, reference by Rysia 2015. <coughs> sure. why, so this is. Why I only start from dark matter? Sorry? Why in this simulation do you start from only dark matter? Um, there's reason for that. This is the 
Disney is the so one Zoom is similar sense. So like you do not fully simulate a phone box, I mean a cosmic box, because of the limited of your computing resources. So the idea, you just start with dark matter only simulation, and then you select like uh, in in our case we select just twenty nine regions that center around most massive uh, halos, and we then we re simulate only twenty nine regions here and in biomic components. We cannot uh, simulate uh, the whole the full box of one year of access. Because it would uh, cost you a lot of compute, computing resources. There's other there's other groups they they do have like full full, full simulation, but uh, with the volume smaller like three hundred kilobytes, sorry three hundred megabytes or something like that. If you check something like illustrated uh, simulation. So to answer the question, the point in which we need to, to simulate that but only Simpson first is just to, to, because then we only select uh, the region that we are interested. I mean, the region we are interested in this case is just the most massive halo. And then we add variable uh, components to those uh, selected regions. We re-simulate them at a higher resolution and in more Variant physics for uh, yes for those uh, sim for those three simulations and for the uh, model of the ICM physics we have here like three different models with the complexity is increasing from left to right so in the simplest one we just have like non reality simulations in that we just consider bar variant particle like positional uh, gas and they don't lose energy. In the, in the second case, we have uh, we add uh, a little bit more complexities. We have pooling star formations and have feedback from supernova. And uh, the last one is on agent uh, model in which uh, in addition to CSF uh, model, we plus we plus the feedback from from agent. Okay, the reason why we have three different model is because. Uh, you know, as we have here many astrophysical processes uh, uh, in interplay. So um, when so that's why we, we we should have different models with different complexities so that we can disentangle the effect of uh, um, of of the astrophysical processes. Okay, um, yeah, just to show you some. Uh, uh, Snapshots from our simulation, but this is from the re previous uh, person. It's not the most updated one, but anyway, just just to give you some idea. So on the left side, we just uh, the projected uh, SD map of that matter only, in which you can see a kind of kind of uh, elements. And uh, on the right hand side is the temperature map of the gas center center uh, around the most massive cluster. Um, once we have the uh, the simulations, the very first thing we have to do is we have to make comparison to observations. And here I show you the comparison between our simulated scale simulations in comparison with those data, with those obtained from lo local universe observations. I mean, when I, when I mean local, it's just a lower shift, less than 0 0.25, something like that. Um, so here I saw the comparison for four different scalar relations, M and gas, and T temperature, uh, Yx uh, products of gas and uh, and temperature and luminosity and, and 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 mass. So the black point is from our simulation, and the color point is from uh, observation, and we see more or less quite consistent uh, between simulation and observations. At the uh, resi around zero, and also we also have variation at the uh, little bit higher resi around zero point five, and um, uh, the consistency is more or less reasonable. Um, so that uh, we can use this kind of simulation for 
for the study of uh, of the scale relation later. So one of the interesting thing we can do next is uh, to study the evolution of scale relations. Uh, the reason is also um, for for a moment. Uh, most of the study of the cluster number counts for observation is just confined to low receive data, like less than the residual one fine, I would say. Uh, because we don't have many clusters at high receive for the same reason like, like Tung's said in his previous uh, um, uh, talk, we did like um, a bigger survey, I mean, uh, more, a better telescope which can, can be able to observe less than high receive. We can have it in maybe in the future with Euclid and with Evochitala. Uh, uh, so that's why um, now it's a time to study the evolution of scaling relations so that we can see how the cluster mass related to other quantity at high receive. So the idea is very simple. Um, uh, so Motivated by the Cecilia model here, we just uh, model the scaling relation between two cluster properties by a single power law, which is characterized by a normalization, uh, the slope beta. And here, the factor gamma it just uh, characterized how those scaling relations evolve and progressive. And here, we choose the over density 500. Um, in addition to the three parameters here, I mean, the normalization, slope beta, and the factor gamma, which also need to take into account the so called intrinsic scatter. So, this parameter just simply characterizes how the uh, real data point is scattered around the, the mean relation. So, okay. so intrinsic scatter is kind of the variation of Sorry, thanks. Did you see scatter the variation of the data? No? We kind of, right? Skies? I can In kind of the variation. The variation? The, the meaning of the in, intrinsic scatter. Ah, yes. Because, okay, uh, here it's, it's very simple. So, um, uh, when I say that I can model the two quantity with uh, some kind of scaling relation like this, it's just the, like um, the means relations. But in reality, it means uh, like, and this scaling relation, if you plot, if you plot in the plot scale, it just be a line, right? A, a linear line. But in, in reality, it's you know, the real data or cluster is not strictly part of the scaling relations. In the sense that they are not dilocated exactly on this uh, linear line, but this has some kind of intrinsic scatter. So, what is the distribution of the intrinsic scatter with the Gaussian? Uh, and in this case, we just model a simple Gauss, uh, Gauss, Gaussian uh, distribution. Okay. Oh, that's what you asked, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why didn't I go find it? Sorry? Why delta? Equal 500? Uh, that's your common, I mean, the common value that the people for observation they, they use for cluster, the, or for luster study, but they have reason for that. So, if you, so, as I, once again, I would like to, to remind that, so here, then the 500 does mean the radius within which the mean density of the cluster is 500 times okay. the mean density of the universe, okay? Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of a, a value to specify how large the radius is. Okay. So um, in, in the observation, most people give this number as because for a reason. So if you use like a larger radius, then your observation likely suffer from, from noise from the background. Because when uh, the further you you move from the central region of the cluster, uh, the lower temperature the gas is. So in the end, you will have less photons. And when you have less photons, the signal to noise ratio is very small. So that's why people uh, uh, don't want, don't want to go uh, to higher radius. But if you put, uh, reduce the radius, and then 
in the central regions, there's something else happened, like uh, AGM feedbacks or uh, very highly active star formation there. You don't want uh, your data to contaminate by those process. So then they go to 500 more or less by the, opt the optimal one. But again, that's just a rough idea. I mean, okay, um, okay, so uh, so now we are, when we already modeled the scale relation by this kind of single power law, the next step is just simply fit it to simulate the simulated data different recipes, and let's see how those parameters evolve regressive. Here, just so you uh, the result from the slot evolution for the 630 uh, uh, scaling relations. Here you see that I have the relation uh, between the mass and the gas mass, mass, mass.